Thanks, Chris, for sitting with me. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, could you give me a quick overview in your words of uh, your career? <laughs> uh, started off in 2D. I uh, did effects for six projects. Uh, worked on a couple of smaller projects and then did four projects at DreamWorks doing traditional effects. And then um, when traditional animation stopped being done widely uh, in 2001, uh, left DreamWorks and spent a year and learned Maya and relearned character animation and jumped back in and been going nonstop ever since. <laughs> and what attracted you to animation? When I was a, an undergrad, I was, I was getting a degree in art at university and I took the one animation class that they offered at my university at Arizona State and then uh, when the class was over, I, I loved the class. I asked the teacher where to go if I wanted to learn more about animation, and he said, go to CalArts in Valencia, near Los Angeles. And so uh, I flew to Los Angeles, hitchhiked uh, up to Valencia with my portfolio under my arm, and talked to the people there, and they let me in. <laughs> and then why did you decide to go in the VFX way instead of animation and lighting? Oh, um, well, when, when I first, my first job out of school uh, was an internship uh, at, a, at a small feature animation company in Los Angeles. And one of the things we did for, uh, for the internship was uh, we just did a short film. We, did our, we would do a short personal uh, film, almost like a student film. And we would write it, draw the backgrounds, do the characters, do the effects, uh, do everything. And then at the end, the, the people on production would grade it. And um, for my assignment, <laughs> they said, well, the background's not that great. Character animation's not that great. The idea's not that great. <laughs> the layout's not that great. But the effects are very nice. So I said, effects it is. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> Thanks guys for pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, they were honest, which was great, which is what I needed. Yeah. Yep. And then you had to do a little transition to 3D. Yeah, yeah. And that was that was hard because uh, I wasn't just learning software. I was relearning principles of animation because I hadn't done character animation in nine years. So uh, a lot of the stuff from school that I learned, I hadn't been using so I had to relearn that and learn Maya and uh, try to put that all together and uh, it, it's sometimes it's hard to go back to school uh, if you're a little bit older my the other students were much younger than me my teacher was much younger than me and so uh, I really felt uh, I felt more motivation uh, because of it I felt like I really had to had to prove myself yeah. mm -hmm. and you have done that transition within the same studio that you worked yeah, right. Which they, is kind of odd in a way. <laughs> it, it, it's, yeah, I mean, my, my whole path has been odd. Uh, I, I actually got very lucky. Uh, and one of the things that people don't like to talk about is luck. And luck is certainly part of it. Um, so the way it happened was I got laid off from DreamWorks at the end of Spirit. And then um, they decided to do one more 2D project with some 3D animation. And that was Sinbad which is, um, yeah, that was the project they did uh, in 2002. And so they needed traditional effects. So they called me back uh, to work on traditional effects for one more project. And then while I was working there doing effects during the day, I was practicing uh, my character at night. And so then uh, they said, we're, we really are gonna lay you off permanently after Sinbad but we're taking reels for 3D. And so when I finally had a reel that was ready for, you know, by the deadline, um, I was already inside. So I kind of had a little bit of an easier route uh, than people who were just completely outside the wall. So I, I kind of got lucky. Um, and I had a couple friends there who were friends with uh, the director on Shark Tale. And so they took my demo and showed it to him. Uh, so. So definitely got got lucky that way. I, they, they may have hired me anyway, but anytime you have the director looking at your work, that's that's always a step in the right direction. It is. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. And being a supervisor, you must have a certain workflow to tackle a shot. Well, it's you know, shots are 
shots are unique. There are certain types of shots, but there are so many different kinds of characters. Um, so it, it really depends on the shot. Um, I still like to work uh, in stepped for, for blocking. Uh, I think just because uh, a lot of us, um, maybe old school guys, we got in that habit early. Uh, so um, I still like to do that, but for, for shots that have a, a panning camera, um, that doesn't really work as well because it strobes uh, on when blocking is stepped. Um, but I, I generally like to animate the body first. Uh, I figure if I can't tell most of the story with the body, uh, unless it's a close-up, uh, but for, for body acting, um, I think if, if I need the facial expression to sell the idea, then maybe the body animation isn't everything it can be. So I try to sell the idea with body acting first, blocked and stepped, and, uh, and I try to get at least 80% uh, of the way there that way. And then beyond that, um, it, it really just de depends on the shot. Um, you know, for, for an animator, I have a very short attention span, so uh, sometimes I, I'll just kind of just work on what I feel like. It all needs to be done anyway, so I don't really pursue it uh, as methodically, say, as a guy like Ted T does. Um, I'm a little bit more, oh, yeah, yeah, that arm's not right. I guess I'll fix that now. <laughs> I just kind of jump around that way, so not a great, you know, I, it's not a workflow that I would necessarily want to teach uh, because it's kind of a little more random, but it feels good to, to the way my brain works, so um, so I don't mind. Now you have evolved from an animation position to more of a leadership position. Your daily duties must have changed a lot. Could you explain to me what would be a normal day in your work? Uh, well, um, dailies are usually very early, 8.30 or 9. So um, we'll go into dailies. Uh, any of the people on my team that are showing, I'll go into dailies with them. <clears throat> and, um, you know, we'll take notes from the director and, um, you know, just make sure that we're, we're all clear on what needs to be done <clears throat> so that when they're working through, um, you know, they'll show me first and then show the head of animation and then the director. And so we'll just make sure we're all on the same page with that. Dailies usually doesn't last too long because it's team by team, so that might be a half an hour or so. And then, um, <clears throat> really, it's just work. I still have shots that I animate, so I'm, I'm animating during the day. Um, but uh, a lot of leads will say, "Okay, I'm going to do rounds at three o'clock," and you know, don't talk to me about shots between now and then. I'll just see you at three. But uh, I don't like to do that because I don't want animators to feel like maybe they're not sure what they're doing and then waste time working if they're not sure. So they all know they can tap me on the shoulder anytime. So really the, the day is work, 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 tap, tap, look, <laughs> uh, give notes, come back, work, get tapped, look, give notes, come back, work. And, and that's, that's how most of the time is spent, and then we, we feverishly try to get ready for rounds, which is usually uh, mid to late afternoon. Same thing, only it's just the director coming around, and I walk around with the director and look at the work again. A lot of times notes from dailies will be shown in rounds. Um, and then just you know make sure we're all clear on where things are going. And, um, and then there will you know, occasionally be other meetings for, for bigger picture things. Um, but fortunately, um, because the way the studio is set up in one big room, uh, it's, it's a very efficient way of working. So I, I, the amount of time that I spend um, not doing anything specific is very small. So even if I'm taking a couple hours out of the day to, to do lead stuff or to give notes or do meetings, I still feel like I have a fair amount of time to just sit down and, and uh, try to get my work done as well. That's great. Mm -hmm. And what do you consider makes a great animation? Um, if the, the number one job of an animator is to put the viewer inside the head of the character. So if we can get a good sense of how the character feels, that's, that is crucial. Um, everything else is secondary to that. Um, you know, there's all the technical stuff, you know, the arcs have to be nice, the poses have to be strong. There has to be good timing, spacing, and contrast, a nice rhythm. Um, but beyond all else, if it's simple, clear, and entertaining, and we can feel what the character is thinking, then it's good. Yeah. 
throughout your career you had a, a few highs and lows. Uh, what would be the biggest hurdle that you had to overcome? Um, <clears throat> I, th I think the, the biggest hurdle was overcoming the, the belief that, that I couldn't do it. Um, I, when I was in school, uh, I was just seeing the work that other students were doing and it was better than mine. And so I spent a lot of nights lying in bed looking up at the ceiling thinking, I can't do this. I, I'm, not, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And uh, um, I didn't stop. I kept going. Uh, so, but I, I think that was probably the biggest hurdle was just leaving myself alone and letting, my, letting me just do the work so I could be good enough. With all your experience working on different films, what would be the best advice that you would give your younger self? My younger self? Um, <laughs> um, wow. Don't worry so much. <laughs> yeah, just um, don't worry about what people think and don't worry about what you think. Um, Show up every day, do your best, and then and go to sleep at night. <laughs> and if you, if your best is not good enough for what you want, then then you can still feel proud. The only the only thing you have to not be proud of is if you don't try. That's it. <laughs> I know you uh, sometimes do test shots on the side and have side projects, but it's the value of this. What do you think? Uh, I think the value of doing your own work on the side is that um, if you, you know, if you spend enough time within a production environment, um, you know, e everything you do is um, is judged by other people, which is fine. Uh, I I don't mind that as much as other people do. Uh, I like input. It makes what's on the screen best which is the goal um, but if that's all you do then the entirety of your creative output is something that is that is uh, not entirely yours uh, and I think it's I think it's good for people to have work that they do that they can really claim to be entirely theirs the creative mind needs something that it can say this is just for me uh, in order to I think grow and be healthy and uh, I think personal projects are really, really good in that way. What motivates you? What keeps you going? Um, I'm, uh, I'm lucky. I just, for, I'm, I don't know why, uh, I'm not sure why, but I, the, the, the love that I felt of it when I first did it, uh, it hasn't, it hasn't lessened over time. Uh, I think, um, I think animation is, it's, it's like being married, um, you know, you, you love someone so you marry them and then maybe 20 years later you're not in love anymore and you're not married anymore or 20 years later you love them even more and you and you just feel so blessed that the same person <laughs> you still love and still want to be with and that's how I feel about animation is that I just the part of my brain that would maybe get tired of it or say yeah all right I've done it what next what next um, I don't really have too much of that. I have other things I like, but the part of me that gets tired of doing it just is not anywhere in me, and the part of me that really gets excited by the puzzle is still very much there. So I, I think really I'm just lucky. <laughs> it seems to be a, a word that you like to use a lot. <laughs> I, I, I think it's, you know, I mean, I, I worked hard too, but, uh, but it's, I think it, it has its place. Mm -hmm. Luck has its place, sure. Are you basically just prepare for it in a way? Absolutely. If, if you don't work also, then luck is meaningless. They, they, they work together nicely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and on the final note, uh, I always like to ask, what is creativity for you? Um, I think it's, it's searching. Um, searching for what, what is the story to be told? What is the pose to tell the story? What do we want from this character? What are we trying to say? Um, sometimes an artist has a great vision and just says, okay, 
this is it. This is the story I'm going to tell. Oh my God, it's perfect. It came to me in a dream, and then they write it down. And that happens, and uh, that's great, but that doesn't happen to me. Um, so for me, it's more, okay, here's the shot. Let's see, what if I try this? Or maybe if I try this, oh, I, I know, I'll try this. No, that didn't work. Oh, I'll try this. And it really feels like I'm looking for the, the combination. I'm looking for the magic to tell the story. And it just, uh, it feels like I'm always, always searching for what will be best. Well, that's a first. Yeah. Uh, usually people say other words. That's good. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you so much for sitting with me. It was really nice to talk with you. My pleasure. Thank you. Hi.